Hey everyone, wanted to take a quick break from fourth quarter 2022 earnings coverage and get back to ideas for top growth stocks for 2023 and beyond. Two names here. First one have been getting a couple of requests to provide some coverage for, and I have not updated any of my models since uh, last September, and that is KLA Core. And the second one, a company I've now owned for about a year now, and I'm warming back up to after a pretty significant five-year outlook from the company, and that is top lithium producer, Albemarle. So here it goes. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Let's start with an over overview of what KLA Core even does in the first place. So we've been doing a lot of coverage of companies that provide chip fab equipment. So companies like ASML and Applied Materials, my two, my two favorite picks. Uh, KLA plays in this space, but specifically KLA provides uh, various inspection tools, equipment that helps chip fabs uh, do things like increase their, their yield uh, on, on the wafers before they chop those silicon wafers up into the pieces that eventually become chips, uh, or just increase the overall quality of their products. So you can see a breakdown of revenue here. Uh, wafer inspection and patterning inspection, uh, patterning specifically uh, some inspection tools that complement ASML's EUV and DUV lithography. Those are the top two money makers, and you can see specifically patterning up big in the most recent reported quarter, Q2 fiscal year 23. That's the quarter that ended in December of calendar year 2022 as well as some other specialty processes uh, for printed circuit board inspection, uh, digital device displays, services making up a nice 17% chunk of revenue. Interesting about KLA here and what got me interested in the company back in August, September of last year was when the US started announcing some new export restrictions to China KLA came out and said that for the most part, a lot of its equipment was going to be exempted from exports, which is significant here because if you look at the revenue breakdown by region, you see that China made up 23% of KLA's revenue in the last quarter. That's significant. But a lot of this equipment isn't specifically used in producing chips. It's quality control. So it's not falling under, much of it is not falling under the export bans because the bans are specifically aimed at trying to slow down China's domestic production of the most advanced chips. And KLA isn't involved with that. It's just simply inspection and quality control after the process of making the chip is finished, more or less. So I like where this company is positioned from that standpoint. There's some other benefits here to the equipment that KLA focuses its attention on. Uh, increasing yield, which is a key ingredient in boosting the profitability for a chip fab, uh, is getting a lot of attention these days, especially as it gets increasingly complicated uh, and expensive to manufacture advanced chips. Uh, KLA is finding really, really consistent growth as it puts more of its machines into fabs around the world. Uh, for calendar year 2022, they, they, they noted seventh consecutive year of growth, uh, really impressive growth last year, uh, 28%. A lot of this was driven by them just catching up to their backlog of orders uh, because of supply chain issues related to the pandemic, um, but really strong revenue growth, free cash flow growth of 18%. And this is a really shareholder-friendly business. 
along the way too. Just in the last year, you can see capital returns. Those are dividends paid. And then any free cash flow left over, the company tends to repurchase stock with over 5 billion returned to shareholders just in the last year. In total, you can see here the incredible results from a company that, you know, not the fastest, most exciting growing company in the semiconductor space, but because of that consistent profitable growth, the dividend and the share buybacks, uh, average 22% annualized return for the stock over the last 10 years, uh, total price return of well over 600% um, on an annualized compounded annualized growth uh, perspective from the stock. This is more than double the S&P 500 over the last decade. KLA Core has absolutely clobbered the market. Now, I want to turn my attention here to Outlook for the current quarter that will end in March in just a couple more months. A revenue and earnings per share guidance has a bit of a wider range. Uh, at the midpoint of revenue, uh, about $2.3, $2.4 billion. This represents only a 3% year-over-year increase, uh, earnings per share, an even wider range. But at the top end of guidance, uh, earnings per share uh, expected to grow about 13% year over year. Basically, KLA is not completely exempt from the export curbs to China, uh, nor is it exempt from the current downturn in the chip industry. Uh, a lot of fabs uh, paring back their spending on equipment. Um, so KLA getting hit a little bit by this, but overall, uh, I like the resilience here of the business, um, still forecasting some growth and management reiterated during this presentation that their long-term goal of growing free cash flow at about a 15% pace is still on track. So free cash flow growth, um, and, and then you can take into account KLA's dividend and the stock repurchases. Uh, this stock could still average a high teens, perhaps a 20% per year annualized growth rate in the years ahead. Uh, that's impressive. Now, just like just about every other chip stock, KLA has put in a very impressive rally since the lows in, in October of 2022. That being said, I still think the value on shares looks really compelling right now. KLA currently trades for about 17 times trailing 12 month earnings, about 20 times trailing 12 month free cash flow. Again, uh, if you believe the company can indeed deliver about 15% per year average free cash flow growth over, over let's say the next five to 10 years, roughly the period that we see this boom in chip manufacturing taking place. I think this is a really cheap stock if you plan on buying and holding for the next five to 10 years. Personally, my interest has been peaked. Uh, I'm glad I took a look at this one again. Again, I had not taken a look at it since last September. So uh, this is a buy in my book right now. I'll be adding a position here in the coming weeks. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Let's pivot to Albemarle, ticker symbol ALB. Again, this is a stock I've now owned for a while. Uh, but many of you expressed interest in some more coverage on these upstream businesses that are uh, that are involved with early on production of chips and manufacturing. Now, Albemarle is a lithium producer, lithium mining company. Lithium is not a semiconductive material. Albemarle does not make chips. However, as you may know, lithium is a key ingredient in batteries which provide the energy, provide 
the power uh, that makes chips work. And as chips proliferate throughout the economy, we need more lithium batteries. Uh, we need advancements in, in battery technology. So uh, though Albemarle is not a chip company, uh, this is still on our chip stock investor list uh, as an upstream company. And the company recently provided some <laughs> impressive uh, some impressive numbers for the next five years. So uh, I want to talk about why I'm getting interested in maybe adding a little bit to this stock again. Now, a little bit of background here first. So you can see the stock chart here, overall good performance considering the bear market of 2022, but it's been a pretty bumpy road for Albemarle. And a lot of that has to do with uh, a lot of these other mining companies that are quickly trying to bring on new production, uh, new mining operations producing lithium. And there's this growing worry that uh, I've had and a lot, of, a lot of other Wall Street analysts have had that there's going to be this flood of lithium supply in the coming years. And for a base material company, a mining company like Albemarle, a flood of supply uh, is not great news because if you remember econ 101 more supply uh, can bring down pricing and for a business lower pricing can mean pressure on profit margins so that's where some of the volatility is coming into play here you can see some of this worry show up in uh, analyst expectations uh, for Albemarle's revenue growth. You, you can see here in this in this line, uh, 2022 preliminary numbers here, um, but Albemarle has said, expect roughly 7.3 billion in sales, more than double from 2021. Uh, analysts expecting another huge surge in 2023, uh, over 60% revenue. But then you see this fall off here uh, in 2024 and beyond. Uh, you see growth moderating. That is the biggest worry here. A lot of this growth expected in 2023 is, I think, now priced into the stock. This is not a cheap stock, especially if you're comparing it to other big mining companies. Um, and I think analysts are now looking at beyond 2023 because, again, of a lot of other mining companies bringing lithium production online and perhaps flooding the market with supply and meeting the growing demand for applications like electric vehicles, uh, the big giant batteries that are getting plugged into uh, the electric grid to help make electricity distribution more efficient and the like. Um, so more supply to meet demand could put a cap on lithium prices and put pressure on Albemarle's profit margins, which I'll point out are suddenly quite good. You can see the company just here, just now starting to hit positive free cash flow, but that's starting to catch up here with the net income margin, 35% uh, expected for full year 2022. Free cash flow will start to converge with net income here in the coming years. Uh, this is a highly profitable mining operation and those profit margins could come under pressure. So not just the growth that could level off, but also the profit margins. Now, with all of that as a backdrop, uh, let me show you the most important slide from Albemarle's recent presentation on its five-year outlook. So you can see in this chart here on the leftmost chart, uh, the 3.3 billion in sales in 2021, the current preliminary number for 7.3 billion in sales for full year 2022, the company now expects its revenue could be in a range of 17.6 to $19.3 billion by 2027, just five more years down the road. So obviously not quite the growth rate that has been experienced the last couple of years, but still more than double the 2022 numbers. Uh, even more importantly here, 
on the far right, uh, let's ignore adjusted EBITDA here in the middle. I want to talk about operating cash flows. Uh, the company going from a base of close to zero in 2021, uh, 1.9 billion in 2022 operating cash flow, all the way to 6.6 .6 to 7.1 billion by 2027. That's even more impressive. So uh, more than triple the operating cash flow off of uh, more than doubling of the sales base. So if Albemarle management is, is, is correct here and it's able to meet these goals, uh, not only will this remain a growth business over the next five years, but profit margins will also go from roughly operating cash flows, roughly 25, 26% of revenue in 2022 to well over 30% by 2027. So uh, exactly what we love to see when we're picking companies to own for the long haul, not just revenue growth, but also uh, profit growth driven by not just the revenue, but also expanding profit margins. Uh, this, this is an incredible outlook that Albemarle has provided. And again, this is this is just this is just a rough guide on what they think they can achieve over the next five years. Um, I'm still nervous that the lithium market could get flooded with a bunch of new supply, and it could hurt all tomorrow. But this is this is typical with with mining companies, with with base material companies that produce commodity products. Uh, they are highly volatile from month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year. Uh, at some point, there will be more supply that comes online from a competitor and things will get bumpy, just like they have been. As of this writing, uh, if Albemarle is able to meet its goals for 2027, uh, the stock trades for four, four and a half times operating cash flow expected operating cash flow in 2027. This could be an absolutely incredible value. Some things to keep in mind here though, operating cash flow is not ultimate profitability. So after a company generates operating cash flow, it still has to pay capital expenditures. That's property and equipment. So operating cash flow, not the same as free cash flow. And mining operations are capital intensive. It requires lots of purchases of property and equipment. Albemarle has some big goals too. Uh, they're adding new conversion facilities to take the raw lithium and refine it into a, a product that's usable by say an automaker making electric vehicles. They're also planning on building uh, this technology park in the Carolinas uh, to advance research and development of lithium uh, and help make their product more usable from battery manufacturers, automakers, electric grid, grid companies, and the like. So there are some capital expenditures here that will need to happen in the next few years. So operating cash flow will get reduced by CapEx. But ultimate takeaway here, uh, this company is already profitable and it could become even more profitable in the coming years. I think the stock still looks fair valued, if not on the cheap side, if you're looking at where this could go in the next five years. Uh, I'm once again interested in adding just a little bit here. I, I feel like I have pretty much a full position in Albemarle. For me personally, that means roughly 2% to 3% of my total portfolio in this stock, but I might add just a little bit more here after the company's really rosy outlook for the next five years. Thanks again for tuning in for this edition of our 2023 growth stock idea videos. I hope you found this video helpful in considering KLA Core and Albemarle. This video just expresses my personal research and how I view putting together my portfolio. It's not meant to be personal advice for you. Certainly not a recommendation to buy. Please do your own due diligence. Hit us up with questions though uh, in the comments below. And 
If you haven't done so already, remember to hit subscribe. We have more videos coming up because it's earnings season. So we'll get back to those earnings videos and updates on 2022 numbers and 2023 outlooks as chip stocks and other related companies report here in the coming weeks. Yeah.